Dom, <laughs> nearly wet myself. <laughs> Please don't. Go. <laughs> this is crazy. Who's excited? Woo! Yeah, I could hear the yas from down the corridor. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was you. Growing up in Ghana, the sun was shining, everything was good. When I moved to UK, it was a cultural shock. Immediately, I stepped outside the airport. I was like, what on earth is this? And it was cold. The adjusting was pretty hard. Back home, I didn't see like boys doing makeup. So when I got over here and then I saw all that, it just drew me in. When it comes to makeup, it has definitely changed the way I express myself. The style that I'm best at is dramatic. It gives me the opportunity to be weird and go like the level that I know that I can go. I look in the mirror, I'm like, oh, you are the baddest bee on earth, honey. You are a force to be reckoned with. When I was talking to the kids in my class and telling them that they could be whoever they wanted and achieve whatever they wanted, I realised that I hadn't really listened to my own advice and it made me think I need to actually like try and follow my true passion and get into makeup as a career. I have always suffered with anxiety and low confidence and I think that is partly why I didn't go into makeup straight away. The thing that I most hope that I get through Glow Up is showing myself that even though I have those doubts that actually I can do this. I come from Bolton, which is a very small town, very laddie, very rugby. You don't really be creative and do makeup. But in 2017, I went into a bit of a downward spiral. It was just a very horrible, dark time. And makeup really brought me out of that. It helped me kind of kind of discover who I am as well. That was the time I kind of refined those skills and I became the artist I am today. I've been a freelance makeup artist for almost 10 years. I was born in Congo and I moved to the UK when I was nine years old. I did not know a word of English. <laughs> I've definitely had my struggles. I don't think there's enough representation for people of colour in the makeup industry. There's so many girls like me who want to do makeup, but it's scary not seeing people who look like you doing the things that you want to do. So I definitely want to be a face for that. When I was a kid, it was kind of the flamboyant, overweight, ginger, gay kid. I had a lot going against me <laughs> in younger years. I was painfully shy, so I didn't have a lot of friends, and I used to get bullied quite a lot. However, there was one thing that people could not deny me. They would be like, you're really, really good at art. So like my superpower has always been my creativity. During lockdown, it's basically where I like taught myself how to do all prosthetics and all makeup. I feel really ready to show the world my superpower. So I'm just trying to do all the prep work and just go in and give it my all. I grew up in Glasgow, lived there up until I was like 19, 20, and then I moved down to London for uni. I studied fashion design. After graduating, it was during COVID, so there was nothing happening. So I just started to like play with makeup a lot more, and I started to really push for it to be a full-time job. As a self-taught makeup artist, I like to do like really strong looks. I look at a lot of fashion makeup, and I just think, why can't I just wear that on my face every day? I think it's always good to show people something different. I guess you would sort of assume that I'm most excited to do the editorial stuff, but I do editorials all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm more excited to do like the SFX stuff as well, just to see what I can do. <laughs> I do suffer from gender dysphoria, a condition where your own biology makes you uncomfortable. Makeup has been a huge step in being somewhat at peace with myself. The ability to alter my presentation and present as femme 
it's, it's amazing. I'd like to raise my beautiful daughter to not even think about gender presentation as such a strict thing. I just hope that she's a well-rounded, progressive human being. So my makeup is definitely glam, glam, glam. <laughs> The dream job for me would definitely be to become a celebrity makeup artist. But when I said to my family I wanted to do makeup, it was definitely quite the thing coming from my background. There's not very many male Pakistani MUAs. It's a beautiful culture to be part of, but there was a lot of judgment. There was a lot of, he shouldn't be doing it. He shouldn't be touching a woman's face. Last year I lost my dad, which was the hardest thing ever. God bless him. He didn't quite understand what I love about makeup, but in the very end, before he passed away, and he definitely did. He always used to say like, oh, you know, you're my brave lion, and my name, my birth name, Heather, means lion in Arabic. I understand now I was supposed to lead the pack, lead the family, and I hope that I can make him proud on this competition. I absolutely am a science geek. My life is complete polar opposites because during the day I work for a COVID vaccine company with doctors from all over the world. And then like as soon as I'm done with work, I'm like shutting my laptop and the next minute you're just la -da 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 in the mirror doing makeup. I'd say it's an alter ego. I pick things up like that. And I think that comes from my science background. You could literally put anything in front of me and I am gonna nail it. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing makeup, I just feel like I'm in my element. Some people meditate, I do makeup. That's what I do. Going through school, I was always drawing fairies, always drawing pixies. So it was really exciting to experiment with makeup because I felt like I started becoming the creatures that I'd been drawing. I wear like pixie ears and have these like horns in my hair. <laughs> it just like makes me a little less human. There's so much restriction within being a human and you have to fit in to be part of society. I think it's really nice to like step out of that. School for me was very difficult. I'm dyslexic and dyspraxic. I've always struggled with like words and train of thoughts and stuff. I'm also very much a perfectionist. I can find myself fixated on one specific thing. The eyes, mostly. They're like these big portals in, in your face. I actually quite like being dyslexic and dyspraxic. If I know exactly what I'm doing, I can just focus on that. So it kind of works for me.